Welcome back to Sports Mecca, one and all. I'm Corey Sanningan, and alongside me for this segment is my esteemed colleague, Mac Mori, and we are here to dive into some post-All-Star break NBA action for you. Mac, it's our favorite time of the year. The it really playoffs, is. The playoffs are getting near, man, and we'll dive right into the, to the controversial topics that have been surrounding the league. First of all, the Lakers. Three games behind the Clippers with 23 games left to go. LeBron recently called out his teammates for the lackluster effort. So I'm just going to lay the question on you, Mac. Will the Lakers make the playoffs? You know, it's a really, really tough one. Uh, they're sitting in the 10th seed. They're about three or four games back, um, the Clippers. And then you look at the playoffs, you look at the West. Um, and eight, six through eight seed, they have the same winning record. I mean, they, they've all won 33 games. So it, it is right there for the Lakers. And you look at their roster, sure, they've got some young guys, and then you go down and you see LeBron James. You see Rajon Rondo. You see Tyson Chandler, JaVale McGee. These are guys, Lance Stevens, and these are guys who have been in the playoffs. These are guys who have won championships, some of them. You know, these are guys who have, are great defenders, have, um, you know, accolades in the NBA and are veterans. And with the young talent that they have, like Kyle Kuzma and Brandon Ingram, and, of course, uh, the greatest player in the NBA right now in LeBron James, yes, I, I believe <laughs> they will make the playoffs. I'm with, and I'm with you on that. I, it's a hard for me to see a LeBron James-led team not make the postseason. I mean, they got, I mean, they're three games behind, but they have the 23 cracks at it. You know, he hasn't, I mean, if you could lay the, lead, lead last year's lackluster Cavs roster to the playoffs, Absolutely. albeit it's in the East, I think that he should be able to get it done. Now, granted, Lakers, you know, 26 in offensive rebounds allowed. They haven't been spectacular this season in the slightest. But when you look at it, they've got winners on their roster. Rondo's won a championship. He's been to the finals twice. Lance Stevenson's been to the Eastern Conference Finals. He's gone head-to-head -head with LeBron in some of those matchups. It's really hard for me to see them missing the postseason, given LeBron's, you know, given his background, his resume. But like I said, Luke Walton might be on the hot seat right now. But, you know, the thing that I think that has hindered this team most is their three-point shooting. I mean, there's no denying that. Rajon Rondo, not a shooter. Lance Stevenson, not a shooter. How do you think they're going to overcome this, I mean, if they draw the Warriors in the first round who are, you know, the NBA's child is shooting threes. Yeah, they're leading the league in three-point percentage. It's not even close. The second is the Bucks at 41. They're at 51. Uh, so the Warriors are that good at shooting the three-point. It really is that way. If the Lakers seed Warriors in the first round, there isn't really much of a chance for them to win, and that's just being logistically real. But if, the, if they are going to beat the Warriors, they're going to have to do it with LeBron James and Kyle Kuzma. And I truly believe that. I think Rajon Rondo is going to have to guard Steph Curry very well, and I think you know, JaVale McGee is going to have to at least suppress – Marcus Cousins and I think Tyson Chandler could see starting minutes in that series uh, he won defensive player of the year back in 2011 yeah um, but you know we, we both think they'll make the playoffs but that's not to say that they, they couldn't mm -hmm. I mean they have the 10th hardest schedule left there's 23 games left in the NBA in the NBA yeah, a big I mean time is ticking they have to do this now they've lost the Hawks twice in the past six games that's inexcusable it, it's 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 abysmal you cannot do that with LeBron and and LeBron making these comments that I, I've now activated my playoff intensity I that just confuses me a little yeah. bit. I mean, imagine if a player like LeBron James, or excuse me, like Kobe Bryant, or like Michael Jordan, or Allen Iverson makes a comment like that with 25 games left, now I'm activating my playoff intensity mode. Uh, no. No, you saw That's Kobe. always activated. Yeah, that's always activated when it comes to Kobe and Michael Jordan. And that's where people are getting at when they say LeBron lacks this killer instinct, even though I wish Scottie Pippen would make up his mind on you know what side <laughs> yes. of this issue he stands between Kobe and MJ Absolutely. and LeBron. But no, that's, the pro that's been the problem with LeBron since he's entered the NBA. It's something that he's had to develop. And those guys you saw walked right into the league with that. If I'm one of LeBron's young teammates especially, that's something that I don't like to hear, particularly because LeBron's coasting on the defensive end. He has been for the past two seasons, given his age and his offensive workload. But, you know, if I'm, if I'm on that team, if I'm the coach, if I'm Genie Buss, if I'm Magic Johnson, that's something I don't necessarily want to hear, given that he's been, you know, he missed a month and they still had plenty of other games that they could have won where he was in the game. Exactly, and we're this late in the season now. Yeah. Playoff intensity mode should have been activated right after you got back from injury and were not in the playoff picture. Exactly. LeBron James missed around 20, 25 games. He missed over a month of basketball this season. That's a lot for a young core to have to take in the Western Conference. Oh, yes. So for him to be upset and making these sort of comments, I mean, this is what he wanted. This is what this he wanted. This is what he wanted. This is what he wanted back in Cleveland, and he didn't complain much about it there. Granted, he was in the East, so he didn't have as much competition. <laughs> I just think this is what LeBron James has wanted, and, and if he wants to be, you know, stone cold, the best player of all time, you got to do it in the West. Oh, you I, absolutely have to I do it in the West. I think that's what it is. And given this watered-down NBA, you know, you can breathe on somebody. It's a foul. If I touch you right here, it's going to be a exactly. foul. So, but, you know, we're going to move on to the LeBron's East counterparts. Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Milwaukee Bucks stand at 45-14. and 14. They are two whole games ahead of the Toronto Raptors for first in the East. 
How long is this going to last, Mac? You think this is, they can keep this train going into the playoffs? I do. I, I do think they can keep it going, and I think a lot of that has to do with their off or their, excuse me their their trade acquisition and Nikola Mirotic. Mm -hmm. You know, we already see them shoot the three point well at, at second in the league, and a lot of people don't think about the Bucks shooting the three well. We think of Giannis slamming it, and you know we think of you know a couple Brook Lopez maybe hitting a three every now and then, but we think of Giannis Antetokounmpo, so we don't think of three pointers. But they're second in the league at 41 percent. Acquiring Nikola Mirotic, who shoots it well over above 42, 43 percent right now. I mean just another guy for Giannis to kick it out to is, is quite scary. Not to mention, they're not even the top 10 on hardest schedules remaining. They're going to be able to keep keep it where they're at in the East, I, I believe so. Oh, I, I'm firmly with you right there. You know, this team's been, like I said, we were raving about the Raptors to start the season. Look at these bucks. Giannis is averaging 27, 13, and 6. He's doing this, folks, he is doing this without a three-point shot. He's shooting 23% from beyond the arc. Now, granted, he has Chris Middleton to do that. He now has Nikola Mirotic to do that. But this is a guy, I mean, I've never, I mean, he's listed as doubtful versus the Bulls in the next game. I've never seen a superstar that can take over a game in every facet and not be able to hit the outside shot on a consistent basis. This is unheard of. I mean, and you look at it, the Bucks are fourth in offensive rating. They're first in defensive rating. Exactly. That's championship level numbers. And if you're the Milwaukee Bucks and you're their fans right now, you're sitting pretty with just 23 games left to go. Absolutely. And you look at it, sure, Giannis has not won a playoff series yet in his career. But this is a different team. Absolutely. This is a different Giannis Antetokounmpo. Giannis Antetokounmpo gained 60 pounds in these past three years of muscle. This past offseason alone g gained that extra 15 or 20 to top off his physique. Exactly. And, the, and, and what he does in the paint has not been seen since Shaq, since Shaquille O'Neal. I mean, th these are numbers that we just don't see. And with the supporting cast, with the coach that the Milwaukee Bucks have right now, with what they're doing in the league, I think they're going to be able to make it solidly far in the East. It, it just depends, you know. Once they once they start to see maybe the Nets or something like that Nets later on, Celtics, yeah, exactly. Like like, you know, that's going to be the deciding factor for them. Oh yeah, I, and I'm with you on that. I mean, they got Mike Budenholzer, who's an All Star in his own right. You know, he's a Popovich disciple. Coach he's, of the Year yeah, candidate. He's been Coach of the Year. He's already been Coach of the Year once. He's looking for his second time and with his second team. That's unheard of. And he, you know, you, speaking of the supporting cast. Giannis has another all-star with him now. He's got Chris Middleton who can knock Absolutely. down a three. If you leave him open, he's going to knock it down on any given night. And But, you know, they're 13th in assist percentage, and that could become a problem when it comes to the postseason. But let's step aside here and look at Giannis as a player, individually. We went over his numbers. We went over his ability. We went over his physique. Is he, is he the MVP? Is he the MVP right now? I think if they keep the first seed in the East – Barring now Houston makes some incredible run and ends up in the top two, you know, which I just don't see happening don't with see OKC me. and Denver playing as well as they are. Unless that happens, yeah, I, I, I truly do think Giannis could win, the, could win the MVP. I mean, as I said, we have not seen numbers like this since Shaquille O'Neal. I mean, and that guy won it a few times in his career. The so. most dominant force in basketball. Exactly, and, and, and Giannis can do that with being able to dribble the ball. He's a fantastic passer. We've mentioned Nikola Mirotic being able to kick it out. We haven't even talked about Malcolm Brogdon, who surprisingly did win a Rookie of the Year <laughs> a few years ago. Yeah, even at uh, 37 years old. Exactly, <laughs> so th these are things that we don't talk about enough. And Eric Bloodstow has been in the playoffs. He's seen minutes. I mean, this is a squad that, that could take it really far in an Eastern Conference that seems to be struggling a little bit. It, it, not to say the least, it's top-heavy. Oh, yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think the Bucs can take it. I think they can take it as far as the Eastern Conference Finals. Now, would I trust a team, a veteran team like the Celtics or the Raptors over them? Yes, I would. But at the same time, you cannot overlook what this team's done. They weren't one of the people. I mean, yeah, maybe we probably had them in our top five in the Eastern Conference. I don't think anyone had them at first. This, this, I sure, sure didn't have them at first at this point in the season in the East because, you know, you have teams like the Celtics who argue. Celtics argue they have the best starting five in all of basketball. And then you have the Raptors who have – you know, Kawhi Leonard, Kyle Lowry. <laughs> now they added Mark Gasol. They got Serge Ibaka. Pascal Siakam has been superb this year. It's really hard to see them getting past the Eastern Conference Finals. There's not a starter for the 76ers that doesn't score 20 points. Exactly. You, you know, it's, it's, it's exactly. And like I said, those veteran teams that have been in this situation might have the advantage come that time. But, you know, at the, you can't deny what the Bucks have achieved thus far. It's been quite spectacular. Oh, quite spectacular. And we're going to move on, though, to the two-time defending champions, Golden State, 42-17 and 17 on the season. They are one game, at, one game ahead of Denver in the Western Conference standings. You have Kevin Durant and Stephen Curry, who are both having you know, tremendous seasons. But the Warriors seem to have taken a little bit of a step back. I'm not much, but they've taken a minuscule step back from last season. Mac, what do you see when it comes to this Warriors team compared to last year? 
Well, this is what we kind of see the Warriors do. They go through a midseason lull, and right after the All-Star break, they maybe come out a little slower than mm -hmm. some other teams do, but that's because they are the Golden State Warriors. They do have a two-time MVP, one-time unanimous in Steph Curry. They do have the back-to-back -back finals MVP in Kevin Durant. They do have arguably the best center in the league in DeMarcus yeah. Cousins. They do <laughs> have a defensive player that you're in Draymond Green. They have arguably the best catch-and-shoot player of all time oh. in Klay Thompson. So, yes, they go a little lull in the middle of a season. They maybe take a couple games off. Um, but what you got to look about with this Warriors team is the only thing that's going to stop them is themselves. When we see the Warriors Absolutely. struggle, it's when they have internal drama. When we see Draymond Green and Kevin Durant uh, fighting on the sidelines about who gets the last shot. When we see Steve Kerr having trouble with the lineup. Those are the few problems that they have, and, and that's all that's going to be able to stop them this season. But when you talk about the lull in, in the middle of the season and then maybe not looking as A1 as the Warriors really are, this is just what they kind of do. They're, and, they're getting ready. And I'm honestly, I'm surprised that people are reading that much into this. We've seen this in years past, even in the Miami Heat with the big three. You know how many times they coast in the regular season, particularly in 2014 and 2012? We saw it with the Cavs. We saw it with all these guys. They coast. I mean, you look at it. Curry's averaging 28.7 points, 5.2 rebounds, 5.3 assists. He's shooting 45% from beyond the arc. He'd That's be an MVP hurt. candidate right now if he wouldn't have missed those. Exactly. And then you have Kevin Durant, who's averaging 28 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 assists. The Warriors, they're first in points per game and offensive rating. This is a team you're going to have to watch out for. I mean, you know, they're the odds, ma they're the odds makers to repeat, uh, you know, to three-peat for the first time since the 2000, you know, 2002 Lakers. But, you know, I, at this point, I can't argue against that. I can't either. I think the only way that they, they could possibly change is if we're – the, the Houston Rockets somehow find, you know, some energy like they did last some season. Defense. Mm -hmm. Exactly, some defense. And I think that starts with James Harden. Now, obviously, he's had to carry them on the offensive side of the ball without Clint Capella and Chris Paul there. Now with them back, he can maybe start getting a little bit less lackluster on the defensive side of the ball and maybe not try and score 30 points every night because he won't have to do that now. I think that for the Houston Rockets will help them tremendously. All right, and we'll definitely be keeping an eye on that as the season draws to a close. Well, guys, that's all we have today for NBA Talk. That's Mac Morey. Thanks so much for joining me, man. We'll be right back with you this week's edition of Sports Mecca Top 10.